Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham. Today I'm going to talk about how and why you would use a content presenter inside a control template in WPF. So we'll start with a quick example. I've got a button on my form and, and that's it. It's inside a grid. I've got a height and a width set and I set the content to a string that just says click me. Now when I go to re-template this button, I'm going to open up the button tag and I'm going to change its template property. So I'm going to say button.template and I'm going to set it equal to a control template. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the visual disappears on my designer up top because I've told WPF to replace the visual tree or the control template for my button with whatever's inside my control template tag, which as of right now is blank. So let's set that to be something instead of blank. We'll set it to an ellipse. And uh, we'll go ahead and set a height and a width for now. And we're not looking at uh, template binding today, so I'm just going to go ahead and hard code these things for right now so we can focus on the content presenter. And uh, let's go ahead and set a fill as well. OK, so now I've replaced, you can see above in the designer, you can see that I've replaced the visual tree of my button template to be just an ellipse with a height and a width and a fill set to light blue. So that's, that's good, but the one thing that I'm missing here on a button is the content that the, uh, that the parent button has set. So it's set right now equal to a string called click me, and I'm not accounting for that anywhere in my control template. Now, one thing I can do uh, kind of naively is I could say wrap my ellipse inside of a grid because we're going to need some containing element to hold the ellipse and anything else that we put inside of it. And I could just put a content control inside here, and then I could set its content, and I could do a template binding to the content. And so by doing that, you'll see that now click me shows up in the top left corner um, of the ellipse, which is the overall button area. Uh, and this is using the template binding extension to say look at the templated parent, which is a button, and look at its content property and bind it to the content property of this content control. That works, but it's kind of a long form and kind of long-winded. Uh, what's easier is to go ahead and just use a content presenter, which does all of that for you. It sets the template binding correctly and sets its content. Now you'll notice one thing here. I've put a content presenter in, and if you look at my visual up above, I don't actually have that text showing anywhere. This can be kind of confusing for some people um, if you're not if you're not aware of what's going on. So the trick is uh, on my control template here. I haven't specified what the target type of this template is, so WPF doesn't know um, what the outer control itself is. So it doesn't know how to do the template binding for you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that to a button explicitly. And when I do that, then uh, WPF can wire up the template binding to the content property correctly, and then you can see the text show up. Um, you, you probably won't see this if you move your control template out into a resources area. Um, you almost always will have a target type set, but um, it, is, it is legal for you to not set a target type when you've got the button template nested here. Uh, and when you do that, Content Presenter won't work, which can be a little confusing. It's confused me in the past. So just remember to set the target type correctly, and then your Content Presenter will work. Um, now, one other thing I could do, um, you know, I'm using a Content Presenter, Content Control. Why not just use a text block here? I, you know, I, I'm going to set the text property equal to, and I'll do the template binding here to content. And now we can see that the look and feel is the same. This might seem OK uh, if your button's only ever going to contain text. But remember that the content property on a button is actually of type object. It can contain anything. So what happens now if we've hard coded our template to use a text block instead of a content presenter, and then I come in here and I set the button content to something more complex than just a string? Um, which you can do, it's allowed by WPF. So let's say that I set this equal to um, a grid. And in that grid, I had, um, let's say, another ellipse with a fill of uh, yellow. And it 
had a height of, uh, let's say, 25 and a width of 25. And, and then let's also say, uh, put a text block in here and say it's text is equal to, oh, I don't know, uh, hello world. So you'll notice that I did all of that and my visual designer up above is not changing. And the reason that my visual designer is not changing is because the content property of the button is now a complex object. It's not just a string. But in my template, I've said, I'm going to just use a text block and set its text property equal to whatever the content is. Well, the text block has no idea how to render that complex content that we gave it. Um, so this is a scenario where using just a text block is going to break down. What you want to really use here uh, is a content presenter. And when you do that, you'll see the designer updates right away. And now all of a sudden, our complex object is being shown correctly. We've got a text block and a little yellow circle in the middle. And now that there's a content presenter in there, we can have full control over things like the uh, horizontal alignment, say, of our content and the vertical alignment. And we can, say, change the font size here and do any number of things. So maybe we change the um, font weight to bold. And maybe we want these, instead of layering over each top of each other, we actually want these to uh, stack uh, vertically. So we can change it to a stack panel. So you can see now the content property of this button is actually a yellow circle, yellow ellipse, and a text block with some literal text in there it says hello world, and it's got the uh, font size change and the font weight. So all of that inside the stack panel is a complex object that we can assign to the content property of a button. And inside our template, in order to support that, right, remember our button is still a blue ellipse. That's the visual we want, but we want an area inside the template that allows us to display whatever the content is that the user has set on the button. So oftentimes you might say you might say that the content of the button is actually an image control um, and you want a space inside your button template to display that image. And in order to do that, you can use a content presenter and put that element inside of the, uh, the template layout. So our template is a grid with an ellipse and a content presenter. And if you look at the default template for buttons in WPF, you'll notice that this is how the default template works as well. So let's go ahead and just comment out our custom template. And you see the visual designer changes right away to be a default button. It's got the gray background with the gradient and it looks like a normal button, but now we're still able to have our custom complex object here as the content property. And the way the default template works is again to just assign a content presenter inside the layout for the button. And now if we switch back to using our custom template, which also has that content presenter available to you, you'll see that we're able to change the look of the button into a blue ellipse, but keep that content in place. Okay, that's all for using content presenters in WPF.